My name is Warrington Hudson. I'm uh, born and raised in the East St. Louis, Illinois, which is the blackest city in America. I've had the great benefit of being mentored by legends, starting with Catherine Dunham, who was a legendary choreographer, uh, anthropologist, and she really gave me a, a frame of understanding that the artist can also be an actor. Uh, I went to film school uh, at Yale University, and I, um, after graduation, I met two other legends who mentored me. One was Harry Belafonte, and I got to him because he knew my background with Catherine Dunham, and also with the recently passed Melvin Van People, who in my view is the, the founder of contemporary Black independent cinema. Those people shaped my understanding of the role of the artist and activist, and, and the city of East St. Louis I grew up in, which I had some very depressing social profile, artistically was very, very powerful. For example, as a child, I continued to turn and live on my block. So I just grew out of a place that was, that uh, while, ch while challenging, was, was full of artistic permit. I did a documentary, which is actually available on, on YouTube, called Unstoppable. It was commissioned uh, by stars because they were interested in the history of Black cinema. And they asked me to do a film about the, the contemporary filmmakers. I said, but what about the, the original filmmakers? And I got a chance to sit with Ossie Davis, Gordon Parks, and Melvin Van People. And what I told each of them, that each of them got me started. When I was a young person in college, I saw Sweet Sweet Back's Badass Song. And for the first time, I said, well, maybe I should be a filmmaker. And then when I graduated from film school, uh, I was trying to figure out how to break into industry. And, and um, Ossie Davis had a program in New York. And this said it's called Third World Cinema. So I got to that program. So I went to, from an from a Ivy League film school to a, a kind of community-based film training program. And also, um, I was, even as a younger person, before I even got out of high school, I had gone to it on a field trip and had seen Gordon Parks uh, signing autographs for Shaft. So those three men who are this course of legends, the first three people to open the doors to Hollywood and the commercial filmmaking were the three people that made me want to become a filmmaker, which is why I studied film, uh, made my first film as a student, then partied that into a, a period of, of documentary filmmaking in which I got support from various philanthropic funders. According to, Mike, according to um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the metaverse is the next iteration uh, of the internet. It will, in his view, will be as transformative to tech and social inter inter interaction as the internet was in those, those 10, 20 years ago. And coincidentally, uh, because I've been following VR as a, as a consumer um, so intensely, I first recognized VR experience in, in 2015 and got into it really deeply, really, really deeply. I was consuming it at every opportunity, so much so that uh, the main point of exposure was I was a regular participant at the Tribeca Film Festival. And I had friends there who made sure that I got a chance to see every VR piece in this place. I mean, I, was, I spent, I would say in over 10 day period, I've been spending eight hours a day watching VR. And so I was very, very up to date. And this past year, when I went in to say, hey man, I'm ready to resume my, my immersion. He said, no, you can't. Said, well, why, why, what, what do you mean? Every, I've been coming every year, you've been letting me do this. He said, yeah, but this year you can't. I said, why, why? He said, because this year you're going to be a judge. So they sent me a badge of this year. I saw everything, but this time I was there to evaluate everything. And because I've been deeply immersed in VR and seeing all the different permutations and interpretations and different variances, it occurred to me that I should put my finger in. And so I had done two VR experiences. I did one, it was a 360 video. Uh, it was a kind of a sketch comedy called Kung Fu Me Too about a, uh, a, a Kung Fu teacher who's a little too touchy with his female students. They kind of handle him. And then I did a, a more nonfiction piece called um, um, uh, Cine Sim Cypher, which is used in the hip hop version of, of, of a hip hop cypher to talk about the past, past 
present and future of African American, well, women and uh, women of color as filmmakers. So those two experiences, they said, well, why don't I try to build a place? And so I was working on building a destination where all this activity would happen. In the middle of my finishing it up, the announcement of the metaverse, it, even the word metaverse. So I was getting there naturally. And, and so when I, when I found out, I said, oh, th then it's like you're doing something and you know what they was gonna call it. But so, so it's, it's fine, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the metaverse. So I got there naturally. And I'm very happy that, it, that it, in my view, it works really well. It's still in beta called wewatchtogether.us. And I think that the metaverse is a, a exciting development because it means that it's not simply a destination like my previous work where you see something. This time it's a place you go and you stay and you interact and you be. It's a uh, difference between a, um, a, a production and a destination. That's, that's that's what metaverse for me it, it makes. It's a destination, not simply a production. Because I've been really immersed in VR for, since 2015, uh, I had a sense of where I wanted to go. The, the, uh, the real stroke of luck is that I had a friend who was, he kept saying, man, come see my space. And I knew him as my friend who does Kung Fu. So I said, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. So no, I, I built the thing. So I kind of arrogantly presumed that because he was a Kung Fu guy, he didn't know anything about this space. So finally I went to look at it and was like, oh my God, this is awesome. This is brilliant. This is fantastic. He said, well, I can build one for you. I said, really? He said, yeah, yeah. And he said, listen, you're my friend. You've been helping me for years. My time to give to do a give back. And my friend, Demetrius Angelo, built it for me. And now, of course, once he built it, I said, okay, let me tweak it. You know, everybody's got to put, put a little tweak on it. But fundamentally, he's a guy who was in that business and built it for me. It's just, it's just, it's just, he's, a, he's, a, he's that kind of brother. I'm also the president of a group called the Black Filmmaker Foundation, which this month actually celebrates its 43rd anniversary. And what we've done for the last 40 years is try to find a space but for people of color can tell our stories about the, the uh, moderation and judgment and, and control of corporate media. And so it's always been difficult. So even if you make a movie independently, you have to turn over to, 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 the, to EBS or Netflix or whoever to distribute it. The metaverse represents a place in which those kind of mediation, moderation don't exist. And so it's very, very exciting to finally find a place where we can do for self and, and communicate with each other. We can have a direct connection to the, to the viewer, to consumer. It, it coincidentally, coincidentally happens at a time when traditional media uh, distribution is being disrupted because of COVID. People are not going to movie theaters. People are getting used to consuming their media uh, by streaming. So it's really worked out well that, that uh, during the COVID pandemic, I was able to, to not pursue my normal production work, focus on metaverse creation, and know that this allows me to connect with, with my audiences uh, in a way that they're open to now. They, they know that, that they can't or don't care to go into a movie theater, because right? you don't know who you sit next to. <laughs> you, know, you can sit, sit at home and, and, and interact as an avatar. And that, that's actually the thing that really got me excited is that there is a there is a, a a ability to have social relationships in your avatar mode, and that's something that it's only in the last couple of years has that been fully fully functional. Before that, the VR experience was a solo experience. In the last couple of years it became a socially shared experience. So my role is we watch together to see everybody who's showing films to say that here's where the audience come together. And they may go off in June for this and July someplace else, but they come back. The constant is that we watch together. So it's an aggregation of, of viewers who talk to each other, who hang out, who have relationships. So I'm the place where you go, if you wanna know what's playing somewhere in America, you come and see what's going on and you meet people and, and you form relationships. 
So you may say, I'll see you next month in, 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 in California, but next time in Chicago, it's, it's a place where it's a, it's a hub, nexus of, of, of people who, who appreciate the work and storytelling of people of color. People will be allowed to uh, put on events in my space free of charge as long as they're not exclusive. Now, if you want to be exclusive, then there will be a charge because then I have to do some programming to make sure that that's password protected. But my idea is, is I'm, not, I'm not in the business of selling service. I'm in the business of community building. If you can call that a business. I think that the future and success of our, of our movement and in our industry, that we need a strong and growing and vital and critical community. And so everything we have done is to create that, that kind of strong, vibrant, and critical community. Well, uh, we, we will have and do have corporate sponsors. Okay. Warner Media, for example, is, is our first corporate sponsor. We will pick four to come. So it's not so much advertising a specific project, although I'm, you know, I'm, I'm open to that. I'm more interested in them saying that this is an audience that they want to, to be aware of what they do. So I'm more interested in their sponsorship of the metaverse. Now there may be from time to time some product, some new release they want to push or whatever, but, but I, I want the, the buy-in to be more global. What's exciting and, and scary about it, I, in the last 90 days, there have been changes. In, 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 in this realm, you don't talk about years, you talk about months. Years don't even apply. It's, it's unbelievable. It's like, it's, it's like building a plane in flight. It's just it's unbelievable how fast things are going. The tech is constantly changing. Um, this tech, for example, uh, right now, without a doubt, the Oculus Quest is the best headset. But there's another headset that we can get called the Pico. We can't get it because it's made in China. And it's a trade war between the United States and China. It's essentially the same price as the, as the, as the Oculus Quest, but we can't get it. So, so the technology is changing, changing, changing. So that's why when you ask me a question about technical stuff, I don't even focus on that because what if I know it's going to be obsolete in 90 days? I focus on the content. Because they want, to, they, want to, they want to meet you beyond the Zoom experience. They want to socialize with you. They want to... I have, you can go upstairs in screening room. I mean, it's a place, it's a destination. You, you, can, you can have private discussion areas. It's, it's a, a, one of my old sitcoms I used to like so much was Cheers. You know, the scene with Cheers when the guy walks in and says, hey, Norm, everybody knows you. Well, that's what it's going to be. And you guys pop in my metaverse and say, hey, how you been? What you been up to? It's a, it's a place. You wake up in the middle of the night with can't sleep. You can pop in and say, hey, how y'all been? So I'm trying to be a place where people who share a concern about media and entertainment and, and critical dialogue can be engaged. That's what I'm trying to build. That's why I'm hopeful it's going to be a success. New Year 2022 is going to be our projected date for the launch of um, We Watch Together out of the beta site. Oh, 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 oh,